My name is Nate Maynard, a Fulbright Fellow at the National Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium, and I study coral reef economics, and that is how to determine a dollar value for coral reef ecosystems. I have a background in climate change, waste management, and ocean economics in general, but in Taiwan here I'm focusing specifically on the value of coral in the Kending National Park. Right now, as you may or may not know, coral reef are seriously threatened by climate change and other human impacts. At the same time, our conservation measures don't really add up to protecting coral, so we need a new way to protect them. One way is to value them and incorporate this economic value into uh, government policy and business practices. Uh, it's extremely difficult to understand the value or the benefits that coral provide for society. So, uh, teams of scientists have to work to value coral through surveys, uh, on site usually, and it takes very long time and with a large budget. So instead of that, I've uh, tested methodologies to quickly determine the value of coral that were prepared by the UN and various other NGOs, and then I've created my own online survey methodology that allows anyone online to express their value they place on corals and use this number in ecosystem modeling and also help uh, create new policies to protect coral. Preliminarily, we found that people generally are very comfortable paying additional fees to protect uh, coral and the environment. And what we found that was really interesting is that for very degraded ecosystems, people would pay a low amount, naturally. For slightly better ecosystems, people would pay a much larger amount. And then for ecosystems that were almost pristine, people would pay a very high amount. But for the most protected ecosystems, for the most pristine ecosystems, people would pay a, a much lower amount, actually closer to um, a very degraded ecosystem. And what we think that means is that if something's already protected, if something's already healthy, people don't want to pay more money. This is really important for restoration, for designing new policies. If we want to restore coral, fix those ecosystems, we should target the kind of uh, space holder coral that, that need to improve a little bit more and then their resilience will build further. Right now we tend to focus on corals or any ecosystem that's already very well protected. It would make more sense to redistribute those resources and target ecosystems that are uh, on the brink of, of becoming healthy. My research is inherently challenging because in the past, traditionally, these kinds of large surveys are undertaken with uh, ample institutional support and usually teams of PhDs. Since I'm only basically one person, uh, things can get a little difficult. It's of course hard to stay, harder to stay motivated, um, but all those challenges created other opportunities. Basically my same research was being done at another partner institution. I used that as an opportunity to change it, to create this online survey model, and to connect with other researchers. When some of my original partners and collaborators decided to focus on other projects, I used that as an opportunity to find other collaborators and create new relationships in ways that improved the research beyond its original scope. Um, one last point on, on challenges. Due to the interdisciplinary nature of what we're doing with this survey, uh, we're working with biologists, computer modelers, government officials, this means that there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, and that's made the initial survey process take longer than I would have hoped, but I'm happier with the end result. So all of these challenges just helped create a better final product in the end. There's one in particular that I won't forget. This was a, an older man, and he talked to me about the relationship that he saw between Taiwan and the United States. And this cab driver told me about his, his memory of the United States are American GIs distributing noodles and flour and, and food aid and water to him and his family. And he thanked me on behalf of his family uh, for the help that Americans provided. And so thinking back on that man and those experiences, I think about how I can in turn help Taiwan going into the future, but for, in terms of the environment, and then in turn how Taiwan has helped me uh, with my own personal and professional development. I'm interested in pursuing uh, this kind of work uh, in Taiwan in the future. So I, I would encourage anyone who is a very independent researcher, someone who has a very clear topic they would like to focus on, and anyone who is seeking the institutional freedom to, to really do some creative thinking and work uh, to apply for Fulbright and to come to Taiwan. Uh, you won't be disappointed with um, the help that colleagues or friends or just anyone on the street uh, can provide you. Mm -hmm.